Welcome back to Champion News Talk Radio. We're brought to you by championnews.net. Happy Mother's Day, ladies, and welcome back to our third annual Mother's Day show. This is Carol Parisi. Our founder, Jack Roser, and myself have a studio of excellence today. We have all the leaders, a lot of the grassroots leaders um, from around the area. And Jack, what do you think of the show so far? Well, I think uh, the show's great because the women are great. Uh, you're not here just because uh, you're women. Uh, you're leaders. Uh, uh, first, uh, you're leaders of your family, which is the uh, operating unit of the society we have here, or should be. Uh, the family is the big thing, and uh, the government ought to keep the streets clean and all that stuff. But uh, the keep their snoot out of our families. I oh, like yeah, that. Oh yeah, absolutely. <laughs> but uh, we've edged off in here uh, in a, a little talk about education and so forth, uh, but uh, you know, your, your families, you've you got kids there, and uh, the kids got to be taught, and uh, uh, it would be just fine to do homeschooling if you're able to, but uh, we're dependent on government schools as it stands. We hope to get away from government schools. We ought to have voucher schools where you would spend the money you have instead of paying it to the government, and, and get a school that you want to do the things that you want done. Uh, and because the public schools are terrible, uh, that's why there's a lot of rioting and shooting and terrible things, because the schools no longer uh, deal in morals. It's been ruled out of the schools. And uh, <clears throat> there's a diversity in the society coming from you women. You're strong, here you here and women everywhere are strong minded, for God's sakes. Let them run their families and let them express leadership in their community, because you're adapted well to it. And in this time when our country's in such great trouble, thank God that you, especially here where we are, have come forward as leaders and uh, thrown yourself into politics and done the things it takes to, to find out how do you win at politics. A lot of it's just walking around and talking to people door to door, but there's a lot of techniques, and uh, you've done that. You've been there, and you've won things in your own area. God love you for doing that. Without you, we would be condemned to Obama and the other Democrats, Madigan and such. Uh, we'd be condemned to poor leadership. But you're setting an example for the world, for, for certainly for our state here. And uh, we, what we need is more women to realize the power that's in your hands, in your families, and to express the desire that you do need public services like schools, and for God's sakes, uh, quit spending so bloody much money, politicians quit spending it so much, and taking it from you in taxes. You and your families are better buyers of the services of life than are the politicians out there. So you shouldn't be there with begging them. You should be telling them, get the heck out of the way. We mothers can run this thing. Well, ladies, before the break, we were talking about our children having a better better life. And some of you, most of you said no, and that's why you're doing this. But all you ladies have done so much to help preserve liberty and freedom. And I think for, if I, I'm going to be safe to say, this is more about principle than politics for you all. Mm -hmm. and, uh, is, it, is it politics for you all? You just love no, politics or no, is it about? No. Okay, okay. So it's really the principles. Now, Jackie, you were saying something about why you think it's harder today for, for women and for families. Can you repeat what you said for our listeners? Sure, I have five children. And I'm going to preface it with the fact that my father was 14 when his father died. And he was the oldest. He had uh, four siblings at home. And he had to go to work because he had to support the family. So my grandmother sent him out, and he went to work for First National Bank of Chicago at 14. What happened was the church made sure that he had a job there, and he went to work. And then I think of my family now. With my children grown, my grandchildren, I could not even envision a 14-year-old child going out and supporting a family. Uh -huh. And 
I worry about my kids because I see they're making much more money than my husband and I ever made. And it seems to be dwindling for them. They're, well, you were saying that you raised your whole family just on your husband's salary. I did. I did. And I learned how to budget. And I think that this is another thing. Why are we always told to budget when they're not budgeting? The government's not budgeting. The government is not. And, you know, I learned to shop right for my kids and do everything and to make sure that they were well taken care of. But now a mother and a father have to work. Because you were saying something, they're not going to know how, many, how much taxes they're going to have to pay. That's right. And property taxes keep mm -hmm. going up. So it's harder to achieve that American it dream, is, if you will. because they are being taxed to death, and mostly here in Illinois. There, there's no future right now. But I, I do believe what Susie said. We have to look for the future, and my faith is in God. We are going to survive this. But it takes, it takes a lot of people to do that. Yep, yep. Deb, what were you saying? Um, you, you did some great things out by you. We did. Um, we, uh, our, our township race in Plainfield was amazing. I was uh, part of the slate. We slated 29 candidates, and 28 of them won. So it was... And that was the Tea Party working with the Republican Party, mm -hmm. which I know for us it has worked out wonderfully. And we basically have taken over the Republican Party in our Ooh, area. That's right. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. So um, it was great. I won trustee. I mean, the, the women, you know, we had 12 women out our way win. So wow. it, it was great. We also developed a Liberty Club, a campaign office. And you won. You're an elected official. Yes, I won. I was one of the And you the had winners. 12 women. 12 women in our area and, our t and the four townships around us won. So it was really great. And I say all that because there is hope. If we don't have hope, we'll quit. Right. right? You can't get up tomorrow without hope. I think hope. the hope is in us and how we reach out to other people. And because I think if, if we, we it, lose hope. <laughs> you know, you can't go anywhere, and that's what we have to give to our kids. Yeah. We have to give them hope. Yep. We have to educate them. We have to let them know that there is an America for them. And they might have to fight for it, but the people in the Depression fought for America. Right. I mean, people, the immigrants fought for America. Yes. You know, so, um, you know, we're teaching our kids, you got to fight for what you want and make them leaders, educate them, and let them be the hope in their high schools and their grammar schools and in their community because they are the next generation. Well, so. that's what Whitney Houston said in her song. I do believe our, ch our children are our future. Teach them well. Let them lead. Stephanie, you have a great story. Yeah, and part of my desire is just like with anything else, you, your nurturers and moms are the ones that are at home. My husband raised, uh, works very hard, so I get to be at home with my five kids, the choices that we made, and we, um, you know, cut some things out and drove older cars. And mm -hmm. my story is growing up on the west side with the mom who had me when she was 17, and by the time she was 30, she had three kids, and she raised us, sent us to public school. She never graduated from high school. Um, she sent us to private schools, and um, so I kind of say I was raised by nuns. And at one point, my kids were in private schools in Chicago. We moved to DuPage County so that we wouldn't have to pay tuition anymore. And where um, my kids were afforded the opportunity to grow up riding their bikes. And um, even though everybody told me not to because there are not enough people that look like me in DuPage County. And at the time, I was a kind of a, a raving Democrat, and I'm reformed Democrat now, <laughs> as a result of just maturing and realizing that the Democratic Party has done nothing but let down black people, especially in Chicago. And people say to me, how can you be a Republican? I'm like, if I grew up in Chicago, how could I not be a Republican? Look what they've done. The same yeah. corners where I used to stand in my uniform skirt, I couldn't stand over there in an armored tank now. It's, it's really right. bad. So my family is the American dream because, um, I, as I said, my mom dropped out of high school. I dropped out of college. My daughter's getting an advanced degree from um, Benedictine. And my son works really hard. He didn't graduate from college, wasted my money for a couple of years at junior <laughs> college, went out and got a real job, bought his first home, is married to his high school sweetheart. I, I just, when people tell me that... Um, I'm a sellout. Um, I hate my own people. I hear this all the time. And, and, but that just fires me up. When you're born on the West Side and you're wearing a uniform skirt in the ghetto, trust me, you're used to being called names. So that just prepared me for what? I know the truth. And I always tell my, my Democratic friends, I have nothing to gain by lying to you. Jesse Jackson, Al Sharpton, they have everything to gain by telling you you're still on the back of the bus. And I, we've already overcome. But if, if they tell you that, then they don't have a job. So they have to keep right. lying to you that it's 1965 <laughs> and they're waiting for you to be free. We already overcame. Go out there and get That's it right. and just work hard. And 
you don't have to graduate from college, it would be great. But if you don't, just keep working hard and keep your eye on doing a little bit better than the last generation. And that's what the American dream is. My mother wow. wanted us never to be hungry because she was hungry. And my kids live in a world that I, I, I could never imagine because we work really hard to, to give that for them. So that's what I love about you know, being a, a big, loud mouth conservative and at this time. This is the best time in the world in history to me to be a conservative right now in Illinois. Wow. And I'm, I don't want all the good people to leave Illinois. We got to get rid of all the bad people. I want to stay here. Stay with us more after our break.